Hi. Today we're going to be doing a problem on chemical dosing because if you work in a water treatment plant there's lots of volumes to work with and doses and chemicals and so you have to figure all that out so that we're maintaining safe drinking water. So today this problem here where we've got a flow rate through the plant for the day 4.2 million gallons and then we've got alum concentration, so we're dealing with coagulation. This is a coagulation problem to know what dose to use. So we figured out that our optimal dose is 10 milligrams per liter, and then our the uh, liquid alum concentration we're gonna use is uh, 5.36 pounds per gallon. So as you get more familiar with working in the plant, these numbers are coming from places you'll understand, and the other operators in charge will be able to help you if you get confused with any of this. Um, so the formula we're going to use for this, chemical feed rate is equal to flow rate times the dose divided by the liquid alum dose. So um, the one thing that you run into with doing math problems is that you can't just dive in and throw these numbers into the formula because you might notice that the, the desired units are different from the units that we've got. So we use something, unit conversions, we, we kind of uh, manipulate our units. We, the fancy word for it is dimensional analysis. It's like, what the heck is that? It sounds like it's from another dimension, but it's not. It's pretty straightforward. So we're going to take each of these units and we're going to convert them into, um, into their respective terms so that we can use the formula and compute the answer. Um, these are a couple examples here of unit conversions. So in this case, we see that we're using gallons and pounds. So we've got some imperial units infiltrating our, our math problem here. So we're gonna deal with those as well. So these things, you quick Google search can get you a unit conversion for these terms, 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. You might know that just from cooking. <laughs> and this one, gallons into liters. So we'll use those. But the thing about unit conversions and canceling units is we have to make sure to use the right conversion. Because this conversion, there's also this conversion. Apologize for that three. So you can see, okay, well one's upside down compared to the other. And remember that, because that becomes important when we start deciding how to set up our conversion factors. Okay, let's go to first conversion. Okay, so the first conversion we need to do is our flow rate of 4.2 million gallons per day we need to convert that flow rate into milliliters per minute. So not only are we going from imperial to metric, but we're changing within the metric system as well. So 4.2 million, 4,200,000 gallons. But now I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna write one day down here, not in a line. And actually, if you do your math writing in a line with a slash instead of an, 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 an above and below, then you're gonna run into problems potentially. And this really helps us with canceling our units later. So we're gonna write it this way, but now we need to convert something. So we had that, that conversion factor of gallons to liters, so let's do that one first. So we have to find out how many liters there are in a gallon. And we came up with 3.785 liters in the gallon. So the trick is here, where do I put the 3.785? Do I put it on top or do I put it on the bottom? So that's the question. But for unit conversions to work, we're going to be canceling units. So if we cancel out this gallons, it's got to be above something in order to be able to cancel it. So the other gallons has to be down here. So we're going to choose that conversion factor. All right, so we've got one gallon down here so that we can cancel out those units and the 3.785 liters up here. Right, so now we know if now, if, when all comes out in the wash, after this conversion factor, we're going to have an answer that's in liters per day. But we don't want liters per day. We're still not close to what we want. So next one, let's go from liters to milliliters. There's a pretty easy one. Liters are on top, so liters need to go on the bottom here. One liter has 1,000 milliliters. Again, some of these are more familiar than other conversion factors. So when we do that one, going to cancel the liters. Notice that I'm not doing any math yet. I'm not jumping in and diving and calculating this. I'm just going to keep putting a string of conversion factors here using dimensional analysis um, until we end up with the units we want and then we'll compute it at the end. 
Okay, mills, we got one of our units. Now we need to get from days into minutes. How many minutes in a day? Most people don't know that off, your, off the top of your hand, but we know that your head, not your hand, but there are 60 minutes in an hour, so you have to multiply that by 60, and there are also 24 hours in a day. So we've got two conversion factors. But let's just shortcut that one and say there's 1,440 minutes in a day. So days on the bottom, so we need a day on the top. One day is equivalent to 1,440 minutes. That will cancel our days. And as you can see now, once we compute this, our units will be in milliliters per minute. So I will just jot the answer down for that one there. Maybe I'll, yeah, I'll leave it over here for now. So that answer is a whopping 11,039,583 repeated. It's really better to carry all of your units when you're doing the math until the very end because um, if you do calculate this without rounding off, I think you end up out by about seven liters, which is maybe not a big deal, but it's always a good idea to carry all your units. So that's our first conversion. So next we're gonna look at the liquid alum concentration, which is given at 5.36 pounds per gallon. And we're going to use our conversion factor again, liters per gallon, we'll do that first. So gallons on the bottom, so where does the gallon need to be? That's right, on top. One gallon, 3.785 liters. So that takes care of our gallons. We'll cross them all out at the end. Um, now let's look at pounds to kilograms. Let's just get those imperial units out of the way first and then we'll play. So pounds on top, pounds on the bottom. 2.2 .2 pounds in one kilogram. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to cancel as you go because it eliminates. So now we've got kilograms per liter. And there are some really shortcuts once you get right into the industry, like kilograms per liter, you can like knock that right into another unit and be on your way. But let's try and keep this simple at this point. So now we need to get into, what do we need it in? We need it to be in milligrams per mil. Okay, so kilograms to milligrams. Woo, that's a big one. One kilogram, one million milligrams. It's a thousand, thousand milligrams in a gram and then a thousand grams in a kilogram. So thousand and a thousand, six zeros, and you've got a million. And the last one we need is we need to convert our liters into milliliters. So we have milligrams per mil. Milligrams per mil. So you know the mil is going to have to be down here. And that works out to um, cancel our liters. So 1,000 milliliters is one liter. Okay, let's see how we did. Got rid of the gallons. Got rid of the pounds. We lost weight. Got rid of the kilograms. Got rid of the liters. All right, milligrams per mil. Woohoo! We got there. That answer is 643.7 milligrams per mil. I just figured that out. What am I guessing for? Okay, good. So we've got two out of three. The next one we need to convert is the alum dose, which is a little bit simpler. But one thing about entering these calculations into your calculator, um, since it's all multiplication division, we can actually just run straight across, do all your multiplication first. So 5.36 times one times one. You really don't need to add the ones, you can just go 5.36 times a million, right? And then when you do the division, a lot of students get confused. Like they'll, they'll, they'll multiply all these, put a number, and then multiply all the tops, put a number, and then do a separate calculation. Well, you could do it all in one step. But the trick is, it's this times this divided by 3.785 divided by 2.2 divided by 1,000. Whereas some students will do this times this divided by this times this times this. It's like, no, that won't work. <laughs> so you have to divide by all the numbers in your denominators to uh, get your final answer. So by all means, carry all your digits again 
because we're going to, we want to use those to have a more accurate and precise um, uh, answer. You know, your chemistry teacher will be wanting to hear about sig figs and what's actually the unit that matters, and uh, it's less important in, in water treatment. But okay, last conversion milligrams per mil. We want that in milligrams per liter, so that's just a uh, thousand. Um, conversion. So we're just going to divide by 1,000 and get 0 0.01 for that one. I'll just write it over here. And that is in milligrams. Milligrams per mil. Okay, so let's jump back over and computer formula. Okay, now that we've done all the legwork of converting all of our <laughs> terms into the right units, we can go ahead and calculate the formula. Sometimes there's, a, there's another step, and we'll do this in another video, but sometimes you need to manipulate your formula, because if you're looking for the alum dose, then, and you had these three, you'd have to rearrange that to solve. But in this case, we can just go ahead and plug those numbers in. So we'll do that. It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> And if we always rate our units in, it's a good habit to get into because then we're always comparing, making sure that we're in the right units and you're more likely to recognize your mistake. You could also go back and check your math because if you're just all punching it in and assume that the calculator is a genius and it's going to recognize all of your follies, you're sorely mistaken. So in this case, for units, what you end up with, we're telling you what you end up with, but you can see that there's a milligrams per mil in the, in the numerator, another one in the denominator, so those will cancel, and you'll end up with your target unit. And your answer is 171.5 milliliters per minute. So when you set up your dosing pump, or a prominent pump, or what have you, if it's a peristaltic, well, anyway, this is what you're going to calibrate that unit and, and make sure that you're dosing that amount from your batch tank for your coagulant. That's it.